What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Stolen Realm. This is a game where you build your own custom party of adventurers and you're going to go on out in turn-based battles and annihilate bad guys while stacking insane amounts of loot. And when I say insane amounts of loot, I mean that. This game likes to chuck loot at you. It loves to. The more loot it gives you, the happier a camper it is. So we're going to dive on in for about 25-30 minutes today. And see if this is something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this you wanted to get access to the early access yourself, I'll have a link for you down below. And then aside from that, you'll also find links to all my requisite stuff like Twitter, Twitch, and Discord down at the bottom where you're more than welcome to join me at any time. Let's go ahead and hit up this single player game. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta make some characters, man. I'm gonna walk you through, so we've gotta make like a whole party full of adventurers. I'm going to go ahead and make the first character, and you guys can see how much customization is available. And then from there, the rest of the party, I'll just mash together, edit out, and then we'll be able to go into the game with a full party. So the game comes with kind of presets. It's got a warrior, a thief, a wizard, and a ranger. There's going to be more added as the game goes along, I would guess. And what we've got to do is we've got to allocate our stats. Now, our stats are already in a good preset spot. And obviously, we're going to need a tank for all of these fun adventures, so we'll start out with the warrior, but I do want to mess with his skills a little bit here. At the moment, there are eight skill trees that you can play around with, everything from fire to lightning to cold to warrior to light. Uh, there's things here where you can make kind of custom paladin builds, you can make sort of shadow knight builds, you can make lightning mage builds. You can do all kinds of stuff with it, and honestly, I'm hoping they run with this idea and they continue to expand this out and add even more levels to it as the game gets more content dense. But right now, we are making a warrior, so I would think... So we've got Restores Target's Health, right? Let's make him into, like, a paladin. That sounds pretty cool to me. We'll make him into, like, a warrior of light. And so what he's gonna need is he'll take Guardian. That's gonna give him some more physical resistance. That sounds good. Uh, we can increase the effectiveness of damaging and healing skills. Okay. For every enemy that's near you, you get two resistance. That's pretty good, because your tank tends to get kind of glomped on. And then we'll give him an active ability. We've got Healing Hand. The caster reaches out to aid in healing 30% of target's maximum health. Okay. Regeneration actually sounds pretty good, too. Let's just go for, like, the, the standard cure spell right there. There we go. I think Intelligence is basically going to dictate how much mana we have. But I feel like I'm pretty happy with where he's at. Now we just got to kind of, like, customize him. And then we got to kind of, like, name him. And that's pretty much uh, all we've really got to do. We can change around his hair color. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll make it like a brown hair color. As far as head types go, obviously you need a dope scar to kind of imply that you're a warrior. I need some eyebrows out. Yeah, give him the eyebrow with the chunk missing. That makes him seem like a brawler. We'll give him a nice little beard over here too. Ooh, that's a good looking beard right there. Yup. Uh, what do I want to name this guy? We'll name this guy. Nope, not blank. We'll name him Clank Belly. Clank Belly the Paladin. Because, you know, I mean, he doesn't really have... Okay, he's pretty he's pretty svelte, dude. He doesn't really have a whole lot of stuff going on when it comes to, like, a beer gut. Wish that I could give him a beer gut. Unfortunately, Clank Belly can't have a belly. He's just going to be... His, he's going to be like Clank Abs because they're rock hard. we got to pick a item for him to start out with. We'll go with the short sword. And then from here, we're going to draft him into our party. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a party of four. And then we're going to jump on into the game. You saw how the characterization and the customization worked right there. So I'll come back once we've got a full roster. All right. So there's our party. We got Clank Belly, the Paladin. We got Thunderclack, the Ranger. We got Chill Boy Chad, the Ice Mage, and Grimy Gabe, the Rogue. This should work out pretty good. I'm excited about this. I accept this party. Let us go forth and adventure and stack magnanimous quantities of loot, my dudes. All right, so the first thing we really have to do is you can take a look around the town. This is basically the central hub. You deploy to missions from here. Uh, this is the place where you're going to kind of like hang out, grab new items, re-equip yourself. Don't know if there's ever anything planned to go down that way. It can be kind of hard to tell with early access games where sometimes they're going with the overall title. But with this one, I really do feel like more stuff and then more structure is what I'm looking at the most. Let's go ahead and click on the portal and we'll get our first mission over here. Unexpected guests. Ah, the adopted traitor. We found you. Oh, we're actually, like, fighting it out right here. Okay, well, let's duke it out then. I'm gonna run up on this guy, give him the stabs. Oh, okay, it wasn't really a stab. That was more of a slash, but your heart was in the right place. 
It looks like our rogue is up. Oh, no, this is our ranger. Okay, why does our ranger have a... Uh-oh. I gotta swap around some weapons. Uh-oh, my ranger has a sword. What's going wrong here? No, I had... No, it doesn't. I'm selected on the wrong person. Yeah, summon a raven, dude. I'm all about that raven life. Perfect. And then we'll just fire out an arrow right there. Done. Uh, one of the things I actually really like about this game is every time you kill somebody, when the ragdoll goes off, it goes off like in slow motion. And so, like, you can actually get some really, really cool scenes in this game with, like, your AoE spells. If you blow up, like, six mobs at the same time, they'll just fly all over the place ragdolling. I actually, I've gotten to the point now when I play this game that I try to set it up such that everybody has low health so that when the mage AoE nukes, I'd get that super awesome, just super Nova of dying dead bodies flying everywhere. I don't know why, but it entertains me. Tracker's Mark. Yeah, go and put that on that guy. That'll increase our damage right there. And then since you're a ranger, I don't really want you to be any closer. Uh, Wizard Mans. What would you like to do here today? Oh, you can shoot out some ice magic? Yeah, do that. Okay, there's a nice little frost nova right there. I enjoyed it. Uh, you can All you can really do is throw a knife at this guy. Yeah, so you might as well do that. There we go. Grimy Gabe went ahead and got his murder. So you're determined to throw your life away for a couple of elves, Watcher. Leave us, Roland. I can help you. You can't hide this time. I can give you power you need. Oh boy, that's a whole bunch of- oh my god, he's got so much HP, dude! I feel- oh, I fear for my safety. Eh, well. Better to die like a hero than stand here cowering. A va oh, wow. He made me more powerful. He wasn't lying about that. He made me, like, super strong. Yeah, throw a dagger at him real fast. Uh, who else do I have going on right now? Yeah, get him behind him and then attack him right there. I'm going to... Oh, well, let me zoom in the camera during, like, this little beginning portion. I was going to zoom in so you could see the action a little bit better, but it's not letting me have it. All right, we'll get him with a crippling shot. Perfect. And then you've got a bow, so maybe start some damage on the big tubby guy over there that's wearing nothing but an apron that's covering his jibblies. And then maybe we'll like, yeah, we'll, we'll mark him up so that we do some extra damage. Uh, Frost Mage, I'm going to need you to like really apply yourself here. Good. Oh, a crit for 2,000 damage? That's pretty disgusting, man. We might be a little bit broken. At, maybe we should side with this guy. Like, I've only been a part of this narrative for like, let's say five minutes. But I do feel as though he has made a strong case as to why we should join him. In a period of, like, 300 seconds, he's taken us from being, like, lame and barely viable and, like, little level one baby adventurers, and he's turned us into, like, kill gods. So all that I'm saying is that, like, my relentless pursuit of kill goditude um, gets a little bit greedy. Power to protect the last of the elves when the Empire comes knocking. But you're not yet convinced. I mean, I'm kind of convinced. I'm, like, a little convinced. Like, would I say that I'm, like, super convinced? No, but I'm, like, a little tiny bit convinced. I mean, thus far, it seems as though your gifts are pretty rad. So, let's not say that I'm a no. Let's say that, like, I'm working on it and I'm making up my mind. That feels a little bit more fair to me. Uh, yeah, get him with the crippling shot right there. There we go. Perfect. All right, and then we've got, like, what, a rogue? I think all he can do is throw a dagger for right now. He's not close enough to the combat to actually get anything done. All right, so he's thrown his dagger. Oh, my God, that was filthy. That guy teleports, which I hate everything about what just happened right there. Uh, if you want to hit him with a stick, go ahead and hit him with a stick. He just kind of used us as, like, a grounding rod for his entire attack cluster. So I feel like it's only fair to really strongly think about maybe punishing him with a little bit of vengeance. Mm, Rogue, I need you to come save the mage. We have an Operation Extract the Mage going. There you go. Just knock him out of the way, dude. Just sweep him off it. Does it splash when he hits the water? Hold on, I want to see. Aw, oh, there was no splash effect. I'm so bummed out. I was hoping water would splash off to the side. You know, I'm beginning to think that adventuring was a mistake. This little wizard's going to give us the runaround, too. He can't even hurt us, though. Like, we're, we're so much... Yeah, throw the bird out. I summon bird! 
birds birds aren't really like an animal that I think of as being like peerlessly badass. Uh, we're one out of range. Feels terrible. Well, at least we're not getting thunder zapped and stuff anymore. He is putting out an awful lot of spells though. Like wizards are kind of a problem in this game. There we go. Let's chill him up. Chase rumors, search the prophecies, try on magical trinkets. Desperate and broken, you will come to me. Just like your brother. Logan, how could you have promised him this? If the bandits tell the Emperor our location, we're not going to survive. They're going to come for us. Please, Watcher, use the portal to find and stop them. Alright, well, off through the portal I go. Back to my shabby, lame, level 1 self. Feels terrible. I had a taste of power, and now, frankly, it's stuck in my mouth. I need to have it. Let's get on with our first adventure and see if maybe we can accumulate a little bit of that for ourselves. You know, some bristling muscles. Some peerless dexterity. I'm going to stop the bandits the, before word of our location gets out. All right, let's do it. Uh, we can change who leads the party. I don't think it really matters, aside from maybe changing who the first person to act is in combat. I don't know. That is one thing that I would change about this game, is I would add, like, a... I would add a speed stat, effectively. So, one thing that I think is kind of a problem with the structure of the game is that it functions under the pretenses that, like, our entire team goes, and then their entire team goes. And I sort of feel like, on a certain level, that limits the amount of strategy and options that you can play around with. Like, maybe I'm just a pleb when it comes to strategy design, but I've always liked it better when characters kind of act in accordance with, like, their stats. And so you've got, like, a list of people that are getting ready to go. And so anyways... Nothing personal, but we got a quest to complete. All right, who's up first? Warrior? All right, let's close the gap. We've got a goblin battle standard right there. It's going to increase your health and damage, but it increases the damage you take as well. Feels bad. Don't want to do that. Uh, I'm probably going to just snipe that little dragon right there. Yeah, just like maybe make him hurt a little bit. We'll summon a bird on that side, maybe to give us a little bit of backup and chase down these random speedy characters over here that I've got a suspicion are going to try to kite us. And then we'll slow him down with a frost shard as well. I'm actually going to make the screen a little bit bigger. There we go. Perfect. Now I can see what's going on in the combat a little bit more freshly. We've already used our attack right there. And then Rogue has started out way in the back. Another thing that I would like to see is the ability to customize your formation at the beginning of the fight. So you have like a deployment phase uh, effectively. Because sometimes I end up with like characters like my warrior way in the back. And my wizard like in the front through no control of my own and I would prefer that that not be the case at least allow me to sort of like set something up uh, prior to the combat okay they're chewing on my bird right now that's okay though because that was all damage that could have gone to other characters okay so with my warrior where he is right now we've got some kind of raving lunatic fox over here wearing tinfoil hats and being like the humans are coming to sterilize the river like he's you know contrails all that kind of stuff Let's just go ahead and fire an arrow. I'm going to try to focus up my damage a little bit. And then maybe you fall back to here since you're ranged. We've got our wizard on this side. If our wizard can eke out some, some sort of murder against that ranger, I wouldn't hate it. But I don't think it's going to be an option. So just keep some damage going out on him. Apparently, we've got like a fire staff. That heat debuff that I just put on him, it basically makes him smolder and burn and take damage as the turns go by. I would like for you to come over here and square up with this dragon right here. Go ahead and use your crippling attack. That's all we've got for right now. And it looks like they're kind of spreading out and scattering. Yeah, they're going to use these melee mobs in the front. One interesting thing about this game is that there are no attacks of opportunity. So you can freely move in between mobs as much as you want without getting hit. Uh, there is a passive ability that you can put on your characters that allows you to have an attack of opportunity if anybody leaves adjacency with your character. But at the beginning of the game, by default, you don't have that available. And so just something to keep in mind when you first start out. With my wazard, go ahead and freeze that guy up. I'd rather not be getting hit with arrows anymore. And then we'll kind of like bring the group together and just sort of gather them on this side. I've only got a melee attack over here, but that'll be good enough, I should think. Little attack gone out right there. I would like it if the damage numbers were a little bit larger. I don't know if we can adjust that. It looks like we can't. And so anyways, 
I would like for the damage numbers to be quite a bit larger and also maybe put an outline around them or something like that. They can be kind of hard to see against lighter backgrounds like they've got going on right here. Still can't approach that ranger right there, but he's trapped, so we should be able to catch him right there because he's going to lose a little bit of his mobility. Uh, go ahead and finish off the fox, and then we'll go ahead and move you over to here to create a blockade for when that ranger inevitably decides to move. We'll get the wizard over here inside that little area, and then rogue, you just kind of move up from behind, and if you can chuck a dagger at somebody, I'd be okay with that. Oh, that didn't accomplish much. We basically scratched him like un poco, like a little bit, but not enough to really make him think about it. Uh, let's go ahead and close the gap right here. I'm going to leave a space for the rogue to get into, and we will start meleeing this dude up. We'll bring this back over here, give him a crippling shot real fast. The crippling shot, movement costs are doubled. Okay. I wasn't exactly sure what crippling did. Like, I knew it was probably something like nerfing damage or possibly like nerfing, you know, movement. But I wanted to make 100% sure before I went and made a fool of myself on the internet for like the 38th time this week. Go ahead and hit him with that crippling attack right there. And, hmm, I tried to get him. I put the, uh, the... I put the attack of opportunity skill on our on our warrior so that like if anybody tried to dance in and out, they'd get hit. There we go. We'll go ahead and swing right there. And we'll fire an arrow, and that should be the end of the fight. Nothing ends conflict like an arrow up the pooper. Not bad. We got a little bit of XP right there. I actually do like this little display for the end of battle butcher's bill and sort of synopsis of what you accomplished. I like that a lot. He's got a wand of fire damage, but that'll give him stats, which is actually kind of dope. We've got a prickly ranger hood, so obviously we know who we're going to give that to. A fit ranger hood, that'll probably go on the rogue. But it looks like we got one for, like, everybody, so we should be okay here. I thought the emperor would grow tired of his hunt after these long years. Nope, apparently not. He wants us. He wants us real, real bad. So you've got the short bow. Let's consider. We've got the prickly range. We've got plus one skill range. Yeah, that sounds great. Go ahead and throw that on. Your gear does change when you equip it on characters. Big fan of that feature. That tends to be one of the things that I look for when I'm playing games like this. We didn't really pick up that many things for the warrior. However, we could potentially put... We're going to lose a recovery. But it does give us a lot of other stats, so I'm okay with taking it. On our wizard... We had to decide if we wanted to put on the wand, but I don't think that I do. Uh, since he's a rogue, I would like to kind of... Let's take that off, and then we'll equip that right there. There we go. Now he's much more roguish because he's dual wielding. I don't know, dude. Like, sword and board for a rogue is, like, weird unless it's, like, a little tiny buckler, and he's got, like, a rapier, and he's, like, ting, 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 you know, doing the Inigo Montoya thing. Uh, we'll go ahead and give him that right there. So we've all got matching hoods now because we're squad. What is that, a big lump of gold? Click the ore vein to mine. Oh, I thought I had to click it fast. Okay, there's a little mini game. I'll get it next time. I've never seen that before. Shrine of the Warrior. Honor his might, remember his courage. What do these do? So might increased by three, movement points by three. All right, Chili Boy Chad, Grimy Gabe, and Ranger, grab that. I do like that you can split up the bonus that each person in your party gets on these little choices at shrines uh, individually. I like that a lot. In fact, that's actually a really, really cool thing that I don't think I've seen many games do with shrines where you can pick and choose what buff each person gets. Do foxes actually go wop 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 It's an interesting sound for a fox to make. I think we may have some kind of like... I don't know. We we may have some kind of very, very interesting biological lesson going on here. Uh, we're really surrounded. This is bad. Well, when you're surrounded, break in a direction. Pick somebody and go after him. We'll go ahead and light that. Oh, we took that fox out with one hit. He don't wop up 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 pow anymore. All right. We'll end our turn right there. With the warrior, hold that flank right there. Just protect all of the uh, ranged characters. We'll go ahead and put out the bird right there. I do love that the bird takes its turn instantly. That's really, really cool. And then with the wizard, I don't know if we have anything close enough to each other to AoE, but we need reinforcement on this side too. Doesn't look like the AoE will get anybody right there, so we'll just start out with the Blood Mask Bandit and do a little bit of damage to him. Yeah, our rogue is going to get gnawed on a little bit. He'll be okay, though. We can work our way out of this. Go ahead and kill that guy off. 
and then get the mana potion so that you can attack again. Throw that over to there. There's a health potion right there. So if he ends up taking too much damage, we can just dip out of the combat and grab the health potion as necessary. Over here on this side, we've got an evil crow. Okay. Oh, wow. He only took two damage? What? Am I, like, crippled or something? Why did I deal so little damage? I sense there's something wrong with me, but I don't know exactly what it is. It says my might is increased by three. I thought I would deal more damage. Well, that one did full damage, so... I don't know what to think right now. Either way, um... AoE that spot right there, maybe? It's either that or I AoE that spot. I think they're in worse trouble over here. We'll AoE right there. There we go. We just blasted that dude clear off the screen. <laughs> That's what you get, nerd. Get wrecked. Okay. We definitely have some minute problems over here. Rogue, I'm sorry to do this to you, but you're going to have to hold your ground and just kind of do your thing over here. Just kind of like... X them off the list as effectively as you can. Grab that healing potion real fast. Uh, for you, did you get your damage back? He's unarmed, but he's got a sword in his hand. Did I accidentally take his weapon off? Maybe that's what happened here. I'll check when we get out of combat. So the rogue, fall back over here to the mage. Archer, maybe kill off Burd. Yes, Burd is dead. Maybe put a little bit of chili ice on that dragon right there so that he moves a little bit slower. I don't think it really intrinsically matters altogether that much. Oh, that bird. Oh, that's my bird. Farewell. You were a good friend, bird. There we go. We're not doing, like, great right now because apparently I accidentally got rid of my weapon without realizing it. So that's just sort of the tactical failure hellscape that I live in of making dumb mistakes. Mm, let's go ahead and we'll just keep working on this side real fast. We got no cooldowns left on the mage, so unfortunately I had to spend my turn blasting. Alright, you punch that dra- I mean, on the plus side, it's a good tavern story- it's a, it's a good tavern story to tell that, like, you punched a dragon in the face to death. Like, that's a pretty cool story. Like, I feel like that's one that I would tell every opportunity that I could possibly get. Huh. Huh, indeed. I tend to say similar things when I get shot in the chest with high-speed projectiles. All right, so we got some Drake scales, fox teeth. We got a wooden heater. We definitely got some more tanky boy stuff, so that's nice. We've got a two-dexterity hood right there, but really nothing that, like, I'm exceptionally excited to see. I guess it's hard for the Emperor to forget the assassination of his entire family. Yeah, that would do it. I could see that being one of those things that's very, very difficult to let slide. Uh, put your weapon back on, dude. I don't know why it didn't reflect the fact that you... See, so it got rid of that. Huh. Weird. I wonder why it did that. Alright, well, just equip that over there. We've got a nicer heater over here that gives you vitality. And so you should get a bunch of HP out of that. I am glad to see that the different shields all have different textures on the front of them. That's really, really nice. I like that a lot. But other than that, I don't think there's too many other things that we need to disperse amongst our party. Let's go hit up this shrine. We've got the Ruined Obelisk. A giant sandstone obelisk towers over you. Drawn in its center is a mysterious sapphire rune emanating magical power. Um, chill boy Chad doesn't need mana, but Clack does and Gabe does. So we'll have them restore mana, and then these two will just get fortitude. So there we go. I would like to see a spell effect or something go off right there when you get that. And then, like, the obelisk crumbles into the ground. It goes... And crumbles into the ground and goes away. I would really, really like to see little environmental effects like that, too. Because they've got stuff like the chest opening right there. So I, I do think that adding little animations to the interactions that the player is going to undertake during the course of the journey are, are very, very important for sort of immersiveness and feeling attached to the gameplay loop. And it looks like this is our final boss. He's got a gun, though, dude. He brought that medieval Glock with him. You're on the wrong side of this war. The elves don't deserve to live. They've suffered enough. All right. Well, I guess I'll send my warrior over this way to go tank Big Man. Uh, he has a lot of HP. It may be wiser. Let's go ahead and put a crow over there. 
just to sort of mess with their opportunities. I'm going to have the rest of the party maybe like help clear all this nonsense out on this side. We got a really nice opportunity right there to board clear, so that's what I'm going to do. And then my rogue should probably come over here and help out with the fight against this dude. Go ahead and cripple him for me, would you, in case he tries to pull a runner. I'm not going to use any more mana. Aw, oh, he can ricochet the bullet off my sternum? All right. Fair enough. My man's got wanted skills. Wanted skills that were, frankly, not predicted properly. Right, go ahead, and we'll keep working on these little dudes. I'm just going to have both ranged characters work on clearing out the backfield over here. And then we'll bring it all together to focus fire on this guy. We've got a higher dodge chance shrine right there and a guardian shrine. Unfortunately, those aren't close enough to the actual, like, main conflagration of war to be useful. Uh, but when you dual wield in this game, you get two attacks, by the way. It's pretty rad. It's basically just double damage. I don't know if the offhand does less damage. I'll have to watch the numbers, and they're still kind of small. I prefer that they be a little bit larger, as I said earlier. But you do seem to get a double attack when you do a wield, and I think that that's pretty rad. Sorry, Broham. You got to go. You've been maged. I actually should have made him into a thunder mage, dude. I don't know why I didn't go thunder mage. It was a five and a six, so I'm pretty sure you just get a double attack when you do a wield. Listen, man. I'm going to need you to stop firing bullets into the side of my jawline. I find that to be an upsetting way for a man to spend his time shooting me in the jaw. And frankly, sir, I accuse you of being a neckbeard and having nothing better to do. Because it's all I can do because, like I said, you're shooting me in the jaw and I have not a gun. Go ahead and get him with the crippling attack right there. We'll go all in. I think this is the last fight anyways, so I don't really care if I burn through all my mana. I want to be a gunslinger. I think I'm going to... That's why I named her Thunderclack is because I wanted her to have a gun. But at the beginning of the game, they don't let you pick a gun as a starter weapon on character creation. Dying ain't much of a living. Yeah, you're probably not wrong about that. You're probably not wrong. Everybody hit level two, so that's pretty cool. And we got some really, really fun stuff here. So we've got a prickly assassin's edge. We've got an assassin's edge right there. What's the difference? Oh, it's got damage reflection. A fit gentleman's vest. We've got a prickly stalker's hood. So as you can see, like, the loot collection is a big part of this game. And I would lean into that if I was the developers. I would make tons and tons of unique gear that drops rarely, that all has its own unique look. I would be modeling that around the clock since looting appears to be one of the main selling points of the game. We're too late. An entire empire is converging to destroy the last elvish town. I mean, I don't really like elves, so, like, I'm, like, fine with that. But, you know, for the context of the game, I am willing to get down and continue along beside all of you. Our location is comprised. The Sultan prepares his forces in the west. Oh, it's a Sultan who's attacking us. Okay. A Sultan, a Sultan. All right, so four dexterity, four dexterity. I don't know. He is our tank, so I think it's not too bad. Is that a dagger? It says it's a sword, but it looks really, really little. That's like a little teensy, teensy, tiny sword. So every time you level up, you get to pick what you want people to have. I'm going to give him a little bit more HP and a little bit more damage. I do find that melee characters in general kind of like lag behind ranged characters and mage characters. Uh, mages are by far the strongest in this game. Mages are brutal. They are really, really strong. If I have anything in here, two might, two intelligence, dodge chance. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and put on the gentleman's vest right there. I'm super, super happy to see they took the time to actually add the armor graphics for everything. Now, we've got Dexterity over here. That's going to give crit chance. I would like you to get mana back a little bit faster. And then maybe increase your mana pool just, like, slightly. I don't think we picked up any ranged weapons. Yeah, no ranged weapons, so not much I can do for you. But if we have anything that has dexterity on it, which unfortunately we do not, I could help you out there, but eh, that's life. Intelligence, vitality, dodge. Okay, we'll give that one to you, and we'll give that one to you. We also need to give you a better sword. I would recommend that they add the ability to click and drag stuff to the different slots as well. Um, I do like the menus. I do think that the menus in this game are really, really tasteful and, like, well-designed. 
but you can't click and drag. And so you've got to like unequip the thing and then equip the thing to guarantee it goes into the slot you want it to go to in the case that you're dual wielding. And so just dragging and dropping would be easier in that circumstance, just in my opinion. I think we've got pretty much, we've got that prickly stalker's hood. Maybe I'll go with the prickly stalker's hood on you instead because that'll give you another two damage return, and you've already got four damage returns, so six damage return might actually work out pretty well. Uh, we've also got skill points now. Every time you level up, you can put in a skill point that's going to make you a little bit stronger, give you some new variable abilities. Anybody can take any skill at any time, so this is a very customizable game that I think if they can keep making these trees like bigger and wider and longer and adding more categories as well, uh, I think they're onto something here. I think there's definitely some options. I mean, things like shaman magic... Uh, I think that things, you know, uh, like sorcery and whatnot. We've got shadow magic. We've got light magic. They've got fire, lightning, and ice. So now we just need, like, some nature up in here. Maybe, like, a few more. Like, maybe some psychic up inside of here. I know there's a lot of people out there that enjoy psi magic. But, yeah, there you go. Uh, this game is called Stolen Realm. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games so you don't have to. Stolen Realm is early on in its early access, but I think it's promising from what they have so far. I think if they structured out the narrative a little bit better and they gave you like an overworld map when you went into the portal that you could kind of like go to different areas and like you could capture different things for differing reasons for like party-wide buffs or like mines that give you resources so that you can craft at the blacksmith and whatnot. Like, I think that would be a real... Because as of right now, when you go to the stores, you just buy stuff. I think it would be really, really cool if they came up with a customizable crafting system where you could control all the affixes. And then you need certain trade resources to do that. So then you capture different nodes on the map with your party. You can build different buildings on the map to protect those nodes from invasions and attacks. Like, there's definitely room for depth here, and I'm hoping that the developers realize that. Because expanded properly, I think they've got a solid foundation to go on. I think the graphical stylings are good. I think it's pleasant to look at. They've got the shaders and the lighting, and I think they've got the color palette just right. And so anyways, I'll see y'all later. Thanks for stopping on in. That's my thoughts on Stolen Realm. Bye, everybody.